Okay, today we were talking about CSOM and more particularly about safe CSOM. Okay, now CSOM is a long standing infection of a part or whole of the middle ear cleft characterized by ear discharge and a uh, permanent perforation. Okay, now I said long standing infection. How long? Okay, so any perforation, any perforation, okay, any perforation with history of ear discharge for more than three months. Okay, more than three months we can consider it as a CSOM. Okay, now CSOM can be divided into two main uh, categories that is safe CSOM and unsafe CSOM okay safe CSOM also known as mucosal or tubotympanic type of CSOM and unsafe is known as squamosal or eticoentral okay now eticoentral and uh, tubotympanic is due to the uh, position where the CSOM is there and uh, squamosal is due to the presence of cholecystoma we'll talk about the later Okay, and there is more complications seen in unsafe CSOM, that's why it's called as unsafe because there's more complication. We'll talk about that in a next video. So today we're talking about mucosal CSOM. Okay, now mucosal CSOM can be circular of the acutotitis media or there can be infection that is coming from the eustachian tube. So I think ascending infection via eustachian tube. Okay, now some things that we need to know about the uh, mucosal CSOM. Now, send, uh, the perforation is always central. Okay, perforation is always central, but the size and the position may differ. Else, the perforation is always center. Okay, now middle ear mucosa may be normal when there is uh, no infection or the infection is just uh, inactive right now, or it may be edematous and velvety when there is active infection. Okay, an ossicular chain may be involved, might not be involved. Okay, so uh, there may be some degree of necrosis, some degree of necrosis may be present. Okay, some degree of necrosis. Now, what are the clinical features of safe CSOM? Okay, so ear discharge is non offensive. Is not foul smelling okay and it is mucoid or mucopurulent in nature okay and for hearing loss it is a conductive hearing loss and it is usually not more than 50 decibels now there is a thing known as round window shielding effect and it is seen when there is active separation when the extra discharge and the patient hears better now why does this happen okay now when the ear is dry the, uh, the ear is dry and with operation the sound strikes both the oval window and the round window okay now suppose this is the uh, oval window this is the round window okay both the oval window and the round window are striked with the same vibration or sound when the there is perforation now when there is discharge round window is covered so the vibration or the sound doesn't reach the uh, round window and there is no cancelling of the vibration that reaches the oval window hence we hear better i mean the patient hears better when there is discharge okay give you a better picture like this there's an oval window there's a round window and it is connected like this okay so when the vibration comes here or it comes here if both are vibrating at the same time then there is cancelling but if it is cut out only the round window is present and it is not cancelled and we can hear better okay so as i said perforation is always central now it can be uh, different type of central perforations like there is anterior perforation where the perforation is anterior to the handle of malleus it can be medium sized central perforation like this okay it can be posterior perforation if the perforation is present uh, posterior to the uh, handle of malleus or it can be subtotal i mean only is a very big perforation with only the annulus remaining okay and then we have total with perforation that doesn't even spare the annulus okay so there are type of the Central perforations.
then we'll talk about ossicular necrosis. Now, I said there may be some degree of ossicular necrosis. So, the patient presents with ear discharge, perforation, deafness of more than 40 decibel. Okay. Now, usually, the most commonly involved um, ossicle or the part of ossicle in ossicular necrosis is the lenticular process of incus. Okay. Followed by long process of incus. And then, suprastructure of the stapes. Okay, they are due to poor vascularity. Now you can do a test called a patch test to see whether the ossicular uh, there is ossicular necrosis or the uh, ossicles are intact. Okay, so we take a thin paper like a cigarette foil and is soaked in Vaseline and cut into size of perforation and then used to close the perforation. Okay, then we check uh, through audio uh, audiogram and see if there is improvement in hearing or not. So if there is improved hearing, then we can say there is intact ossicular chain. Okay. But if there is decreased hearing, then we say there is ossicular fixity or discontinuity because earlier when there was perforation, okay, there was perforation, the vibrations go through the perforation and even though the ossicles were not moving, it directly strike on the oval window. Okay, and we can still hear. But now we have just patched it up. We have closed the perforation. So vibrations are not reaching through. Okay, so there is no vibration of the oval window and we are hearing even less. So, if there is decreased hearing, we can say there is ossicular fixity. Okay? If there is no improvement, we just say there is technical fault and we can do it again. So, we will talk about management of safe CSVM. Now, first we have to assess the patient. And how can we assess the patient? We examine them with otoscope or microscope. And what are the benefits of uh, examining them with the microscope or otoscope? First of all, we can see if there is any granulation tissue or not. Okay? And then we can also uh, see the status of the ossicles, okay? And we can also see whether there is uh, tympanosclerosis and if there is any adhesion or not, if the tympanosclerosis, okay? And if there is any adhesion or not and if whether the squamous epithelial lining is uh, coming out, coming in from the uh, edge of perforation, okay? Then we can do audiogram to see the type of the hearing loss and the degree of hearing loss, okay? Then we can also do culture sensitivity and uh, culture sensitivity of the ear discharge to see what type of organism is there and what type of antibiotics should be used. Okay. We can also do mastoid x-rays and CT scan. Uh, I mean, it is uh, not so important in safe CSOM, but it is very important in unsafe CSOM. Okay. We can see there is necrosis of the bone. Okay. Now, how to treat the patient of CSOM? Okay. So first, we can go with medical management. Now, medical management is very simple. First thing is we have to just uh, clean the ear, right? We can go for oral toilet. So dry, done by dry mopping and absorbing cotton buds. We can do suction clearing and we can do irrigation. But we don't do syringing, okay? Syringing is not uh, advised. We can give antibiotics like local ear drops containing neomycin, polymyxin, neomycin, polymyxin, uh, chlor uh, chloromycin or gentamicin plus uh, steroids which have local anti-inflammatory and uh, suppressant properties okay then we can also go with oral antibiotics in uh, acute cases okay so we give them for at least six weeks and it is used to reduce the discharge and to make the ear dry because uh, any surgery is not feasible when there is active infection where there is discharge okay so we use these drugs to just clean, uh, just dry the ear up. Okay, then we, after that, after six weeks, we go with surgical management. Now, what do we do in surgical management? We do tympanoplasty. Okay, tympanoplasty is the surgical mainstay. Now, what is tympanoplasty? Tympanoplasty is myringoplasty plus ossiculoplasty. Okay? So, what do we mean by myringoplasty and ossiculoplasty? Myring, as you know, is tympanic membrane. And oplasty means reconstruction. Okay, so we are reconstructing the tympanic membrane. Ossicles reconstruction. Ossiculoplasty. Okay, and when we do both of them, it is known as tympanoplasty. Okay, so there are different types of tympanoplasty. We will not discuss about that. Uh, so. What are the types of graft used? Okay, so temporalis, temporalis fascia is the most commonly used type of 
graft in myelinoplasty. We can also use pericondromy of the middle ear or we can also use flat. So how do we proceed to do myelinoplasty? Now there are two techniques. There is overlay technique and underlay technique. Okay. So a name suggests it is pretty much what you can understand. The graft is placed under the malleus and over the annulus. Okay. Now, if you don't understand, don't worry. I'll be uh, talking about that in a later. And here, the graph is placed under the annulus and under the malleus. Okay. So we know that tympanic membrane has three layers, right? Epithelial layer. Okay. Then we have the fibrous layer and the mucosal layer. Okay. Now. Since there is a perforation, the fibrous layer is almost gone. Okay, but there is fibrous layer at the side. It is known as annulus. Okay, so what we do is we lift the outer epithelial layer and we place the graft over the mucosa like this, and we take the handle of malleus and bring it over the graft. Okay, now since we are placing the graft over the annulus on the fibrous layer okay is known as overlay technique okay and in contrast when we are doing the opposite i mean we are lifting the epithelium we are also lifting the fibrous layer we are also lifting the mucosal layer and we are putting the graft there and then we are putting or supporting it with the handle of malleus it is known as under the technique. Okay, got me? So that's all about my ringoplasty.